Hey everyone, welcome to another Lightroom editing tutorial. In this video, we are going to turn this very underexposed image into this vibrant sunrise shot. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file with the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So here we are in Lightroom, you can see the image, it's very dark and underexposed, but why did I shoot it this dark in the first place? Let me explain. At first, I was planning on shooting an HDR sequence. This means this is the shot just for the highlights to get all the details in those bright areas. Then we have another shot for the shadows to get all the details in those areas. And then there's also this exposure for the midtones. However, once I was at home, I noticed I can pretty much get this image done by only using this raw file. So how do we do that? First off, let's expand the basic panel. The very first thing I like to do most of the times is to just change the profile from Adobe Color, in this case to Adobe Standard, and just watch closely what will happen to the shadows. You can see they will already get a little brighter. Overall, we are losing a bit contrast, but that's not a big deal since we want to push the contrast manually anyways. Let's fix the underexposure right away. Looking at this program, you can see it's very heavily underexposed. Going over this little arrow will show you the pure black areas of the image. And as you can see, those are areas that are not that important for the overall look of the image. What this means is we can just crank up the exposure and we will get back all the details we need to get a pleasing image. Now, let me raise it some more. I think that's looking like a good spot. The histogram looks much better and we don't even have any overexposure. Now, some people might think due to this heavily adjusted exposure slider, there will be some added noise in the image. But let me zoom in. You can see that is really not a big deal at all, at least with modern day cameras. So don't worry about that. And from this point on, since we have fixed the exposure quite nicely already, we can work on making this image a little more moody. First off, I want to adjust the white balance. As I said in the intro, I want to make this vibrant and very, very warm since I want to get this sunrise feeling. So I'm going to bring up the temperature. Let's raise it quite a bit and give this image all those strong yellow color tones. Perfect. At the same time, I'm going to bring down the tint. This will make the yellow tones a little more intense and just correct the color some more so the image won't look too unnatural. Perfect. Then we can play around with the tone adjustments some more. This area right there where the sun is coming through slightly is quite a bit too bright. We can get back some details by just bringing down the highlights just like that, looking much better this way. Also, we could raise the shadows a bit, giving us some more details in the foreground by making the darkest areas just a little brighter. Wonderful. And finally, again, I'm taking a look at the histogram and you can see there is some room left on the right side, which means we can raise the whites slightly without risking overexposure. So let's do this and thus just add a little more contrast. Nice. You can see there is overexposure kicking in just by holding down the Alt key and dragging around the white sliders. But again, in this area, I don't think we need all the details we have. So let's just leave it at that point for now. Let's add a bit of texture, giving this shot some more details. And at the same time, of course, we want to raise the vibrance. For this shot, I'm going to raise it quite a lot. And I'm also going to add saturation. That looks great. Here we have the image after just a few basic adjustments coming from this underexposed raw file. But we can enhance it quite a lot more by using a bit of masking. So let's open up the masking panel. And let's see, I think the first thing I want to do is to add a bit of glow around that bright area. And for that reason, I'm using a radial gradient since it fits the shape of the light quite nicely. So let's drag one up like this. 
And I'm going to rotate it to fit the shape of that bright spot. Just like this. And I'm also making sure to roughly cover this edge of the rock. So we get a nice glow effect overlapping that rock. In here, first I do want to drop the highlights. And the reason for me to do this is because I plan on using negative dehaze, which will make the area even brighter. So by bringing down the highlights, I just counter this effect. But I'm also going to increase the blacks, which will be the base of our glow effect. And then let's make it more intense by bringing down the dehaze. I want to have a heavy glow effect, so I'm dropping it a lot, just like that. Nice. Then I do want to work on the sky. What I mean by that is I want to make the area around the bright spot darker. Uh, let's see, I'm going to use a linear gradient. Just try to cover most of it. Usually I could just simply use the select sky mask, but I want to show you something else. And that's the intersect with option. Using this linear gradient alone, we will affect the landscape in the foreground. So I want to tell this linear gradient to only affect parts of the sky. For that, we can click on those three dots, then go to intersect mask with and here select sky. For this scene, Lightroom does kind of have a hard time selecting the sky, but you can see how this works in general. Now the linear gradient only affects the sky. I do want to adjust this mask further, so let's click on it and say subtract. Here I'm using a radial gradient and of course I'm going to subtract an area around the bright spot, since we don't want to darken that, otherwise it would look unnatural. So that's looking like a proper mask. Now what I'm going to do here is to just bring down the exposure. I'm also going to add some contrast and a bit of clarity. Okay, that looks great. The colors start to look a bit weird, especially in the upper right corner with those green color tones. So I'm going to simply bring down the saturation slider. We don't need the colors here anyway. Perfect. Let's also work on the foreground, mainly on this white water here. Again, I'm simply using a radial gradient Let's target this area like this. And in here I am bringing up the whites, which will make, of course, the highlights brighter. I'm also going to add texture and clarity, which will make this white water just look a bit more detailed. So let's add some texture and clarity. Nice. I do want to use the same effect on a few other parts, so let's just add one more radial gradient just for that white water in the right bottom corner here. All right, that looks great. Then I do think this guy could use some more darkness. Again, let's just create a linear gradient and I'm just trying to target the upper right corner like this and just bring down the exposure. Not going to drop it too much, but I just want to add some kind of vignetting effect and thus just lead the eye more towards the center of the image. Now we're almost done, just two more masks. You can see there is some strange color going on in the left area of the image and I do want to change that by using another radial gradient, just covering most of this area and then I'm bringing down the saturation. I can drop it quite a lot actually, as you can see since we don't have much colors in here anyway, except for those strange blue highlights in the water. And finally, let's add some more subtle glow using a big radial gradient for the center part. Just like that, going to place it over the center right here. And just bring up the blacks. If you want, you can add some more warmth here by bringing up the temperature, of course. Just very, very careful. All right, perfect. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn them off real quick so you can see the difference. Here the image after just a few base adjustments and here with the masks. All right, we're getting there, almost done. Now let's do a bit of color grading. 
I'm going to start in the HSL panel. Let's open up the Hue tab. What I want to do here is to just slightly change the yellow tones since for my taste, they are a bit too yellow. I want to make them look a bit more orange. So to do that, I'm simply going to drop the yellow hue. Okay, looks much better. Then I'm switching over into the saturation tab. Here, I want to bring up the orange color tones, the yellow color tones, and even the blue colors. And with those blue color tones, I mostly will affect the white water in the foreground because I think it looks quite good if the white water has a little blue color cast going on. Next up, the split toning in the color grading panel. Let's start with the highlights. And you can probably guess it already. Since we have some warm highlights going on already, I'm going to use a warm hue. Let's go with something in the yellow range. And I'm going to raise the saturation only a tiny amount. Nice. Then for the midtones, I do want to have the same thing with a warm color tone and a low amount of saturation. Perfect. Then to get some color contrast going on, I'm going to go ahead in the shadows and just apply a cold color tone. So let's pick a cold blue hue. And here I'm just slightly raising the saturation. Don't want to overdo it, but that looks great. Finally, I'm heading down into the calibration tab. Here I do want to bring down the blue primary hue, which will give us some, some more intense red highlights. And I'm raising the saturation a lot. This adjustment will also give the white water some more blue aqua color tones. So just be aware of that if you don't want that. And finally, let's go into the details tab to sharpen this image. So I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking because we don't want the whole image to be sharpened. Just a few parts of it like this. And then I'm just adding a bit more of the amount. All right, that looks great. And here we have the final image. So we went from this underexposed raw file to this beautiful sunrise image. There is one more thing I want to change, which I can certainly not do in Lightroom, which is this strange gap in the clouds up there in the left corner. So let's right click, edit in and choose Photoshop. Let me duplicate that layer by pressing Ctrl J in case I mess something up and let's go up here. I do think I can try it by using the content of the I'm grabbing the lasso tool by pressing L, just making a rough selection of this gap. Then I'm hitting Shift F5 with content we are selected. Let's hit OK. So there's some repetition going on. I'm just going to clone stamp them out. But otherwise we are done with editing this image. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any specific questions, let me know in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.